Hey YouTube, it's Hanna Loba. If you want more Moto America content, check out the new and vastly improved Moto America Live Plus app. It's the only place you can catch all the race action in one place all season long. Click the link in the description below. We have Kyle Wyman, Troy Herfoss, and Hayden Gillum occupying the front row. With Rocco Landers, Tyler O'Hare, and James Raspoli outside of row number two. Back on to row three, Jake Lewis, Flinders, Wyman, Bobby Fong is not in this race, but Larry Pegram is. Corey West there in 11. So Larry Pegram has taken Bobby Fong's place for this race after Bobby had that incident this morning in Superbike. It's time to go racing. And a good launch from your pole center as we head off into the left-hander turn number one. But it's going to be an inside move and a lead change just like that. And it's going to be, looks like Troy Herfoss takes over the lead from the 33 of Kyle Wyman. But Kyle looked like he got the jump, didn't it? That Indian, once uh, once it got rolling, it was able to get up the inside of Kyle Wyman. Now these two, this morning in our Baggers Challenge race, they ended up one and two. Herfoss took home that 5,000 that in that race earlier, but Kyle probably learned a couple things. So we'll see if he can put that to use. Tyler O'Hara does a nice job. You see him there in third, and it looks like Raspoli just there in fourth with the two Vance and Heinz Harleys of Rocco Landers and Gillum, who must not have got a very good start himself. Fresh off that superbike, Greg. He had to change out of those leathers, get into his Vance and Heinz leathers. So Gillum, our defending champ, back in sixth. And a lot of these riders waiting to go racing as the day's been delayed by some rain a couple hours ago. But one rider that has already raced is the number one of Hayden Gillum, who's trying to find his way up to the front. But Troy Herfoss doing a great job. But Jay, you talk about that race that happened earlier today, and it was these two up front, and Kyle Wyman tried to get a drive onto the front straightaway and get past Troy Herfoss for the win. But for Kyle Wyman, he wasn't able to get that done. It was a 35 hundredth of a second victory for Herfoss. But now we got eight laps to go after they come across the strike. But up front we go as Kyle Wyman coming off out of the keyhole down to the back straightaway last time had a look over his shoulder. And you could tell that Herfoss is starting to up the pace. We go 28 4 0, fastest lap of the race, 28 7 for Kyle Wyman. Hey, fans of Moto America. You can pick your favorite riders for a chance to win money available on your favorite sport book and daily fantasy sites like DraftKings and Underdog Fantasy. Visit nxtbets.com slash playma for exclusive sign-up bonuses for new players and receive bonus cash. Available in legal states. Check out nxtbets.com slash playma to see where you can play in your state. Yeah. You see there, Raspoli had a look, didn't he, Greg, at the inside. Wasn't quite able to make that pass. Now he's got to have another look. They come down into turn eight, but that big Indian is awful wide down there. Now this becomes one line. Now if you look here, O'Hara opens this next turn up a little bit, and Raspoli's going a little bit tight where that hurts him now. As you see, O'Hara is able to pull that little bit of a gap to go up over the top of the hill. So he pulls that little tiny gap over Raspoli just because he opens that up. Now the two Vance and Hines, Harleys of Rocco Landers and Hayden Gillum are starting to come back into play with these guys. We're going to have a four-rider battle for third. Raspoli next lap down that back straightaway. has got to make a move on O'Hara. And uh, if he can, I feel like he's got a little bit of pace right now on Tyler. Here comes Raspoli onto the front straightaway. Is he going to have a move up the inside? Leg a dangling, and Raspoli will take over the spot. That's for third place. And now Raspoli's got a lot of work to do. A look down the outside for a minute and you can see Raspoli it looked like Tyler didn't kind of get out of that last turn the way he would have liked and it allowed James on the factory Harley to sneak up underneath him up. and it's still pretty close up front but you can see the gap between Herfoss and Wyman the 17 to the 33 now here come these four riders that are battling for the oh, final spot man. on the podium and Tyler O'Hara trying to get that 620 pound plus motorcycle and then we had another little bit of rainstorm a couple hours ago as Landers goes up the inside and what's caused the, the, the result result of that too is that Mid Ohio right now doesn't have rubber all over the racetrack, so it's a very select line on when you're going to be able to pass. He's got a and problem. for the 29, Tyler O'Hara with a bit of an issue there, trying to get the bike slowed and stopped. He's, uh, so he's now going to be the one pushing Raspoli. You'll see here, O'Hara had to look over his shoulder, and uh, Hayden Gillum went up underneath him. So maybe that was just one of those things where uh, Tyler didn't feel like he could tip the bike in. Kind of shaking his head. So sure we'll, we'll have to keep an eye on him. He's, there's obviously something that he's not quite comfortable or happy with. As you see Kyle Wyman now is drawn up to the back 
of Herfoss, 28-6 for Herfoss, 28-5 that last time through for the two leaders. Wyman now has had some laps behind Rocco Landers right behind him. That's going to be a tight squeeze as they got down into turn six. We'll have to get back to that battle in a minute, though, because right now, Wyman is looking like he's trying to set up Herfoss he into up. turn eight. He makes that pass. Herfoss Whoa. slings it right back past him, though. Boy, Kyle really had to get on the gas to square it up and nearly spun up the rear tire sideways. So the Rocco not at 100%, but left side of your screen, Jay, this is how the lead unfolded. Yeah, and that was basically Kyle jams it up underneath Herfoss. Herfoss turns it back. Yeah. Look for Gillen to, to start to work on the number 43. As they're going to come around, there's only going to be two laps to go the next time through. And for Troy Herfoss, it's been since Road America. Back at the beginning of June, the worm is back there in eighth place. He just won his personal best at a 131. Here comes the number one plate going around Rispoli, who was trying to get his factory Harley Davidson slowed down, but so much movement on the brakes. And then fortunate circumstances that Troy Herfoss tip off and only finished one point ahead of Wyman. So Wyman doing everything he can right now to keep this thing going. And there's only a single lap to go. So Wyman, he can only if he can only lose five points to Herfoss in this one. It's really a win in the championship for what, him. What a rebound, though, for this man right here, Troy Herfoss, who had come from Australia as an Australian Superbike champ and really the beginning of the year showed a lot of pace, arguably could have won the first two races at Daytona. Drafting got in his way there a little bit as it was the first time he'd been to the Super Speedway that is Daytona. Then they went to Atlanta, and it was Kyle Wyman's turn, and he did well there in the first. But Troy Herfoss won that second race in the rain. So these guys swapped it back and forth as far as points go. That's Kyle right. Wyman has really come on, though, the last few rounds. But Herfoss, this is going to stop the bleeding. And uh, for Wyman, a second place is still going to go a long way for him. And for Rocco Landers in his first season in this category, it wasn't until four races ago when he found himself on the podium. And of the last four races, it's been two second place finishes and a third for the number 97. But for Troy Herfoss, he came out of the gate, Jason, in Moto America. He starts off the first eight races of the season with nothing but wins or second place finishes. He got his first podium finish on our ninth race of the season. And now coming to the line, wheel in the air, the Indian factory racer, Troy Herfoss. The Australian takes the big win here at Mid-Ohio in his first trip to the circuit. And he's able to hold on to victory by one second over Kyle Wyman, who seemed to have figured something out there at the end of the he race. Did. Yeah. Seemed like he got things sorted out and was able to hold off the advances of the 97 of Rocco Landers, who beats his teammate Hayden Gillum. Rispoli in fifth, Tyler O'Hara ends up in sixth. And here's a look at the race place, Jay. Here's a look at the race one results from Mission King of the Baggers. And it's Troy Herfoss who wins by a second over Kyle Wyman. Championship implications. Well, he knows he's in for a fight. Kyle took a shot, and Kyle had some problems with the front tire. I thought maybe he was having a little issue back shifting, possibly. Uh, but Kyle just shows that experience, knowing, you know, that he's losing the front end. The tire is is going off. Today I have to take second. I have to take the 20 points. I can't toss it down the road with the issues that I'm having. No, he knew that he had that pad going into the race today and was able just to settle in there. Let's talk really quickly. Rocco Landers, fourth podium of the season, but it's three in a row. He has figured out this bagger.